A lot of us photographers use Max, be that for airdrop, the awesome screens, or the awesome battery life in these new M series Max. I can almost guarantee you, you're not getting the most out of your Mac. I'm not gonna talk about Lightroom, Photoshop, or any photo editing apps in this video. I'm gonna show you five apps, some workflows, and some tips that is gonna get you the most out of your Mac. The first app is Palatro. Now I'm a big stickler for learning keyboard shortcuts. It allows you to be as fast as you possibly can, but not every function in a program has a keyboard shortcut, or you just frankly don't use it enough to learn the keyboard shortcut. There's a million different reasons. What Palatro does is it gives you a command bar. With a keyboard shortcut Shift Command P, it pulls up a command bar. Essentially all it does is it allows you to grab any menu bar item that lives at the top here and punch it into the command bar and it'll execute that for you. So for example, I'm gonna show you how I use this to speed up my workflow. In Photoshop, something that I often do is flattening images to get rid of all the layers. Now there is no keyboard shortcut for that. I'm sure you could configure it, but I don't use it that often. Shift Command P, we can type flatten and it will flatten the image straight away so quick. Or if we've got a selection, we can quickly expand that selection by 50 pixels or whatever you wanted to do. It makes utilizing programs so much faster. Palatro is a paid app. It is $6, I think, or maybe $7. I'll put the price on the screen. In my opinion, it's absolutely worth the price because it speeds up your workflow massively. We've all been there before where you get a logo from the internet or you download a photo or you get given a photo and it's super low resolution. So this next app, Upscale, is an AI image upscaler. Free and open source, no charge. Works super awesome. So it's got this super clean interface. Essentially all you do is you drag your photo in, pops up on the screen, you choose your model. So there is a bunch of different models here. Um, any of the general photo ones work great. It depends image to image what one is gonna work best. So have a play around, but essentially you select your model, you select your output folder, which I'll just do the desktop and upscale. It takes a little bit, not very long at all, like 30 seconds. And you've got a beautifully upscaled image that's ready for sharing. So once you've upscaled your photo, you get a comparison where you can slide back and forth to see what it's done. So you can see what it's done and it's already saved to your output destination. Super handy, works great. There's a bunch more advanced settings, which honestly you don't even have to touch. It's an awesome, awesome thing to have in your toolkit. Now next I'm gonna get into a quick tip. If you're constantly importing photos from you know, SD cards, CF Express cards, whatever your cards are, you can make it so that when you plug in a SD card, whatever, or your camera directly into the computer, it will automatically open a program for you. So I have it set so that I can automatically open Lightroom the second an SD card's installed. That way I can get straight to importing photos. So the way we do that is with a pre-installed app called Image Capture. So if you open Image Capture, it's not gonna show much. So once we import an SD card, it will obviously show all the photos here. I wouldn't use this program to import your photos, but what we can do is we can press these three dots up here and press connecting this camera opens. I have it set to Lightroom Classic. You could set it to anything. If you're a video shooter, you can set it to Final Cut or you could set it to open a certain folder. So much power here. So if I set it to Lightroom here, so I've set it to Lightroom. Now I'm gonna eject this card. I'm ejecting the card and I'm gonna plug it back into the computer and see what happens. So we plug it back into the computer let it recognize, second it recognizes Lightroom straight open. I can get straight to the import menu. How good is that? That's just such a time saver. It's such a small thing, but it's so useful. I think I should quickly mention as well, the app doesn't have to be open for it to work. So SD card goes in and Lightroom opens. Now, speaking of automating your Mac, let's talk about another pre-installed Mac app, Shortcuts. Now, Shortcuts, if you haven't heard of it before, essentially is kind of like a baby programming language where you can add little blocks to complete tasks. You may use like things on the iPhone to download Instagram videos and that sort of thing. 
but it's also available for the Mac. Now I have a few shortcuts here that are really handy in my opinion. I'm gonna show you those ones, but let this spark some sort of ideas for you so that you can make your own. And I'd love to hear what you do with shortcuts down below because I feel like this is so underutilized on the Mac. So for example, I have a shortcut called resize to megapixels. So if I select any image on my computer and I go F1, it pops up with a little dialogue, how many megapixels do I want? So if I wanna reduce this to 12 megapixels, I'll type 12 megapixels. Pops up with the same dialogue of where I wanna save it. Save it back to the desktop. And boom, I have a 12 megabyte, a 12 megapixel, sorry, image straight away. Super quick. If you're trying to get around like upload restrictions on a website, that is super handy. Like you just reduce this file size super quick. So another one I have is called airdrop and label. Often when I'm doing an event or something and I need to airdrop photos consistently or send photos out consistently, I will export lower resolution versions to my desktop, like about 24 megapixels to my desktop to quickly send off. And then I will export higher quality ones later just to get the images out. So using this shortcut, I can select any image I want and do my keyboard shortcut, which is shift option command A, but you can set it to whatever you want. And I can airdrop it straight away. And once it airdrops, I have it to label the photos so that I know that I've already airdropped them, which is super handy because once I press done, it labels them purple, so I know that I've sent those. Now you could customize that, you can make it so you airdrop it and it deletes it. Um, there's so much options, so much power in this that I frankly haven't delved enough into it and I'd love to hear what you guys have thoughts on, opinions on, super powerful. You should be using shortcuts or at least playing around with it. Now, if you want these two shortcuts, I've got a download link in the description, so you can go there download these, try it out for yourself. You can customize them just so that you don't have to manually make them yourself. So the next app is gonna help you protect your Mac long-term and it's not one of those stupid clean Mac X bull It's Al Dente, which is a battery management app that allows you to make sure that you're getting the most out of your battery long-term. Essentially what Al Dente does is it limits your battery charging to 80% until you need that extra 20%. So if you're going out for the day or something, you need that extra 20%, you can tell the program, hey, charge up to 100 today. Now, the reason we do this, because if you know anything about lithium ion batteries, when you charge and live within that zero to 80% range, you're gonna get the most out of your battery long-term. Al Dente has a free option and a paid option. I highly recommend the paid option because it's so worth it long-term. Essentially what it does is it limits that charging, but it has a bunch of other features. So it's got other features such as sale mode, which allows it to use the battery a little and then charge the battery up a little bit. Just is all smart features to make sure that you're getting the most out of your Mac battery. And it's also got this feature called power flow, which allows you to show how much battery your laptop is using at any given time and how much battery is flowing in to the laptop. So this is super handy because sometimes you're, so sometimes you're using a really low speed charger and this will show you that you're actually draining faster than you're charging or you're barely charging at all or you're well over your threshold. So you will be charging quite quick. Awesome, awesome little app. I think it's well worth the money because you want to protect that battery as long as you can. Battery replacements is possible, but is a pain in the butt. Protect your battery. I'm going to get into some more general purpose applications. It's just going to make using your Mac a little bit faster. Doesn't necessarily relate to photography per se, but it just makes using your Mac way more enjoyable. So the first one is Raycast. Now Raycast is a replacement for spotlight search on the Mac. It's essentially spotlight search beefed up. So we can do anything that spotlight search would normally do, you know, open up an application, search files, search the internet, hello, whatever you wanna do. Whatever you normally use spotlight for, you can do in here. Now where this gets really powerful is some of the extensions you can use. I'm gonna show you some of my favorites to really help with the workflow. So first one is caffeinate. So this stops your Mac from falling asleep. So I can caffeinate for two hours and now my Mac will not go to sleep for two hours. It will stay on regardless of if I'm touching the computer, 
whatever. That's awesome. I can also check the status of caffeinate. So it's caffeinated right now. I can make sure that it's not gonna go to sleep. So in the realm of images, another awesome extension you can use is image modification. So we can convert an image straight to the HEIC file, for example. Super quick, super easy. You don't have to open up in Photoshop and re-export it. You can download YouTube videos. You can search your password manager. There's a million things you can do in here that just make using your Mac way more enjoyable. You can create QR codes, so many things in here. It's just way better. Makes using your Mac way better. I high, And it's free. I didn't even mention that, it's free. I highly recommend installing it, having a play around. Even if you don't like it, uninstall it later. Give it a try. Next up is my favorite web browser, which is Arc. It's sort of a new take on a web browser. It has the sidebar on the side. It allows you to save all your tabs really easy. Main thing I really love it for is different profiles. So with a two finger swipe on the side here, I can change what profile I'm in. So I can go from my business photography profile to my just everyday relaxing profile. So many things this program does, it has AI features inside to you know get sentiment analysis and that sort of thing. Super handy, but mainly it's just that separation so like I've got my personal YouTube account on this here and then I've got my YouTube account that you're watching this video on here so allows you to have a little bit more flexibility of where your accounts live and give you that little bit more separation speaking of which I have 376 subscribers you should subscribe if I, especially if I've helped you at all and this is like a little bonus app that I'm gonna to touch on I don't think I'm going to use this long term, but I sort of found this app while doing the research for this video. It's called Eagle, which apparently is meant to be like a Pinterest style thing, but more local. I have it looking at just my edited images library here, which is kind of cool. You can tag things, you can rate things. The only real fun thing I found in this program that is you can search by color, which is really cool. Um, so you can punch in a color and all your photos with that color shows up. So like that's all my blue photos or if I go all my green photos. There is like a accuracy slider, so you can be as precise as you want with that certain color code or you can be pretty inaccurate and just go any shade of green. I don't know, someone might like this. I am pretty meh about this especially with how much it costs but thought i'd throw it in there just in case somebody really gets amazed by that i hope you found some sort of tidbit to take away from this video to get the most out of your mac if you want to know what editing apps are out there you should check out this video i did where i edited a photo in every single photo editing app so you don't have to